Oh, kia ora, right. everyone. Uh, I'm Nungshi, and that's Tashi. No, actually, I'm Tashi, and that's Nungshi. I just made it easier for all of you. Um, but no, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, this is us actually um, eating mangoes, which is our favorite fruit. We were three years old. And uh, as much as we are twins, we also have a twin inheritance. So we come from two states in India, the state of Uttarakhand and state of Haryana. Uh, but growing up, we had a very nomadic life because of our dad's military profession. So we traveled all over India, uh, met with new different people, learned from different cultures. But wherever we went, one thing that stood out was the way in which gender roles were just restricting girls from so many areas of life. For example, we never ever saw girls play any sport in any playing fields, or even in our backyards where we would only see boys hold a cricket bat and not girls. In that context, we feel very lucky that our father was able to cherish the outdoor life with us. I mean, he made outdoors a part of our lifestyle. And I remember this time when you know, he would convert our school bags into backpacks and accompany us outdoors or climb a nearby hill. Or when how kids would run away from the rain inside, he would take the opportunity to take out his scooter, make us sit behind him, facing opposite, and give a different perspective of life. But it wasn't until 2010 when Nash and I found ourselves on top of Mount Rudigera in the Indian Himalayas at 19,000 feet, looking at the vast expanse of the mountains feeling the clouds underneath, did for the first time, we realized that we were capable of so much more. And until then, it was just these fears that we had started to internalize, whether it was girls climbing upstairs, falling and breaking a leg, or not being able to find the right guy to get married to. <laughs> like, really? I uh, could care less. <laughs> so we did internalize all those fears, and we came to a point, I think that moment when we were on top of that mountain, it was a revelation. And we realized that mountains don't discriminate based on gender. They don't know whether you are a girl or a boy. They throw the same challenges at you, and it's up to you how you overcome those challenges. And so standing there, looking at each other in that admiration of how we overcame our fears at that point, we decided that if we do something, we will do something so big that we become an inspiration for a million other girls in India and around the world that are denied those rights, that are denied those opportunities. And damn, it's hard to be a climber and a speaker at the same time, right? <laughs> I mean, I can climb Everest, but this stage is like, woo! Um, <laughs> but no, before I let my sister speak, there's this, this, this uh, video that a friend actually uh, had made for us, and I'd like to play that video just to show a little about what our work is. Uh, so if you could play the video, thank you. <laughs> As the youngest persons ever to have completed the last degree Explorer's Grand Slam, Tashi and Nungshi Malik are awarded the Leif Erikson Young Explorer Award. They are the first siblings and twins to climb the seven summits and reach the North and South Poles. The first successful summit was accomplished in February 2012 when they climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, Africa's highest mountain. The next summit would be Mount Everest, which they climbed as first female twins ever in May 2013. By the end of 2014, at the age of 23, they completed the Seven Summits Challenge and then immediately embarked on the last degree ski to the South and North Poles, which they reached, respectively, in late December 2014 and April 2015. Tashi and Nungshi started climbing purely for the love of mountains and sport, but have ended up climbing for a cause. Fighting female feticide in India and girl empowerment through outdoors, they established the Nungshi Tashi Foundation to continue their work for women's rights. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Well, we are here because we want to change the world. Now, we can't really change the world if we just go to the summit of a mountain. We only understand it better, but we really don't think about how other people behind us, especially women, can be on that journey 
on a similar path to reach new heights. Standing here on the Kiwi land, we can definitely draw on the energy of Ed, but we knew him so well. Um, his humility, his vision, his drive to change the world for a better place than he found it. And that's one thing we've learned from our journey across the world, is that if you follow your passion for thrill, it remains just that, thrill. But if you want to make it lifelong, self-nurturing and self-sustaining, then you need to be able to contribute to a larger good. Which is why we are here, because mm -hmm. we love this community. Yeah. We care about impact. About a year ago, we started the Outdoor Leadership School. But one of the challenges that we face today is creating a cohesive environment for both boys and girls, men and women. There seems to be a tendency for boys to kind of like make fun and tease girls based on physical appearance. You know, how often do we go see guys on the corner <laughs> giggling and saying, look at the way she climbs. These are small nuances that we observe in the outdoor community. And we are here to learn that from you. Learn ways in which we can dream up gender equity in the outdoor world that we are so passionate about. We want to see more women adventurers, mentors, leaders, and guides. So tomorrow, if someone asks us this question, who is your inspiration? Who is your mentor? We always have a choice between a man and a woman and not come up with the question, meh. We would like to just end this by saying that our biggest mountains are in our minds. We want to see how many mountains we can climb together. Thank you. Thank you.